Hey, dude. Hmm, what's up, man? How do you feel about having a a YouTube channel now? Pretty good, but the video aspect is a little uh, exposing. It's so like, uh, exposing? you know, I, I wonder if there's people out there who kind of only have an idea of what I look like through my voice. You're like, oh shit, I and thought like, he was going to be. This guy's w- arms are fucking long as shit <laughs> now. He's like. way hotter than that. He's actually a, a, just a troll. <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah, just yeah. shocked at how well, ugly we are. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't want all the YouTube comments going off of how we are, but, you know. What's cool, be- though, is I feel like this <laughs> has really opened up the kinds of things that we can do. Yeah. And, uh, segue. Yeah. This is, uh, this is a new kind of thing. We Usually we do kind of like straightforward episode podcast stuff where we just talk to people. And yesterday we were at, at Madness on Main, which is an awesome event. And we had this idea of making a new kind of video. So that's what this is. And uh, it's called, uh, fucking what's it called? More or more and less. More and less. More and less. So in these videos, we're going to go and we're going to ask people, uh, what does X need more of and what does X need less of? And yep. in this case, we were talking specifically about Houston. Yeah. I mean, we were talking to bands and stuff like we that. We were talking to uh, bands mm-hmm. uh, that were playing the uh, festival that we were at yesterday. So... First of all, Madness on Main was fucking amazing. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah. I was like kind of nervous because the rain was like going, the the weather was nasty. And also, like I've f- seen some local festivals recently yeah. that have been kind of not we're, been we're doing too bit. well. Yeah. So I wasn't expecting a crazy turnout. Right. I really wasn't. Also, part of it was that this is the first time it's at White Oak Music Hall. And, yeah. uh, but the, man, the way they turned it around and, and laid out the – because they use White Oak Music Hall and Raven Tower. They got lucky with it, it being called Madness on Main and then yeah. they've been finding venues that were also on Main. Yeah. This is the fourth year they've done it. Yeah. But, uh, dude, like it, I feel like it's bigger than it's ever been before. There was, like, what, like, yeah. three stages – there was uh, a market outside. Uh-huh. With like, I mean, I was like walking up and down this market. And we're not market. talking like, just like vendors. I mean, there are vendors, but we have like tents like laid out. With oh, food, trucks, food out there, trucks, food trucks, clothes. There's like, like a stage like laid out in turf in the middle. We had like these like uh, folk. Yeah, they were playing like like sitars and fucking. We were just hanging out and sitting outside. <laughs> and it, was, it was awesome. It was great. It was really great cool. But they utilized the center part of of like Wadok Music Hall slash Raven Tower. They utilized like that parking lot that connects it, so it like made one giant like plot. Yeah, and it made it like a festival grounds. Yep. And I was like, God, this is really fucking That's genius. Fucking so shout out to everybody who who organized that thing. They were super nice to us and gave us a yeah. spot to film this piece and you know to film this video. Yeah, correspondence to work with and stuff like that. Yeah. Fed us some yeah. Frank's pizza. Oh, yeah. We just Frank's. ate way too much of Wouldn't it. Wouldn't know like bullshit Little Caesars and those Frank's. Oh, it was like, Frank's. Yeah. And I like <laughs> folded that shit in New York style. Oh, it was tremendous. But. Let's get into this video. We right. first first question obviously is what does Houston need more of, and uh, the second question is what does Houston need less of. We're gonna get a lot more of these videos coming out. We're gonna do one tomorrow uh, with a, uh, someone you'll see. I'm not yeah. gonna, I'm not gonna well, fucking really get into another, it. That's another story. Uh, but really, this just kind of ties into why we're doing this. I feel like we we we've been doing a podcast from the very beginning because mm-hmm. we felt like the city needed more not only podcasts but like coverage of local artistry and creativeness uh uh just people who kind of came together and gave a shit and started organizing and doing things a little more together and i felt like having a podcast and a a platform and a medium to talk about those things would kind of help that and push things in that direction and god damn if it doesn't seem to be kind of like just totally linking up and now it, it what an awesome time to be in Houston, Texas, man. Exactly, yeah. it's, it's so and It's so fun. So now we expand it onto video, add that component onto it, and we can cover it better, and we could do more little segments like yeah. this, like the one we're about to show you. And, uh, yeah, and hopefully when it comes to more ideas, this isn't the only, yeah. you know, this isn't the only, it's not going to stop Let's here. not rant on. Let's get into the first, uh, let's get into the first more, more and less with featuring a bunch of fucking cool people that you all know and love and that we all know and love. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What do I think Houston needs more of, other than Lyric Michelle? Um, Houston needs more of um, national exposure. I mean, Houston's artists are so amazing from um, not just me, but from women like um, um, Genesis Blue, Persef One, uh, Ashley Tolman, um, Cam Franklin, The Sufferers, to artists like Dobizi and um, Kyle Hubbard, and I know I'm missing all of my friends, uh, shit, but um, Houston needs more exposure because we have such such a, a wide range of talent, and we've been killing it. I just want people to know and see that. Houston needs more love. 
You know why? I just came from a barbecue that that boy Devin the Dude put on, and he had some THC-infused chicken sauce. And he wasn't charging nobody. Like, not that I'm saying you don't have to charge anybody, but he was just doing it for the love. He was just like, I love my city, and I'm trying to put it on for my city. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I can only really answer that question right now from, like, a selfish perspective. So I'm trying to, to work. I think that uh, with the venues and the bands that have kind of exploded in the last few years. There's a lot more action going on. There's a supportive scene, but it seems like there's not a lot of like infrastructure that helps bands grow outside of the scene. So like Mark Austin's a good example of a guy. He is the guy who, you know, has taken some of his bands and gotten them to be able to tour and stuff like that. And I think there might be some room for other people who are interested in that kind of thing. I don't know. Basically, the bottom know. line ends up being like, can people make a living off of this ecosystem the way it is and how many of these people are going to get to do that and you know like how do we move along you know exactly Houston needs a little more backing man and I'm saying that because there's so much creativity hold on um, man Houston needs more intentful content um, just like uh, the content that you're providing let it have like meaning and, and like let it be in, intentful in, in your actions and be very aware that like uh, of like the impact that you want to have and, and, and like what you want to do. Houston definitely needs more of a community sense in it. I think that miss that's missing a lot of that. I think it needs more DIY venues, uh, just places for people to come that want to come through on tour and stuff that don't feel pressured into like some sort of corporate fucking like venue thing. It, it, it just makes more sense to have like a lot of venues around, but there's they always shut down. You can't really keep them open for that long. So we need to figure out something about that for sure. Houston needs a little more backing, man. Uh, there's so much creativity that goes on in the city, but like some people just either never get the opportunity because of either connections or whatever, man. Like just needs there's a lot of creative people in here, and I feel like a lot of it goes unnoticed. So, and that comes from the scene. That's not, I'm not even talking about promotion. I'm talking about the scene. A small community is great, but it needs the whole city to get behind it. You know, we come, before, we come a long way since the screw music, and I, I feel like it just needs to, we, have, we need to support more. Now, I would like to see more, uh, like, independent experimental music. I like uh, whenever you go to a show and you're seeing an artist that's doing something that's very unique. So I'd like to see more of that as opposed to people just kind of following the lines of what they think music can be. So now in a crazy turn of events, we asked everyone what we thought Houston needed uh, less of. Now, I don't want to get too deep in, you know, social and economic, um, like political jargon. And I don't want to, I don't want to, but I think it's a really serious issue that Houston really needs less um, Mosquitoes. Now, I feel like the mosquito problem in Houston is just so, you know, it's it's taxing on our humanity. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Houston needs less hate. Some hating people in the city. There's some people who show a lot of love. But for the most part, you know, there's some people who hate. Not particularly on me, not particularly on my scene, not particularly on anything I'm even around. But I don't care where you're at. You can use less hate. Uh, I, man, I honestly don't think that there's a need for less. It's like a uh, there's some other cities that are, you know, known as being music cities and stuff, and they almost have too many bands and oversaturation. I don't think we're at that point in Houston yet. So it doesn't lead less than nothing. Always more. <laughs> Go hard. Go home. What Houston definitely needs m less of is a clickish attitude. There's a very big click, like thing going on around people just stick to what they're comfortable on things like that i think people need to definitely branch out a little bit from what they're comfortable from less shade man less shade not as like i said it's not necessarily towards me or anyone around me but like just know that some people you know although you know rap is a competitive sport i'm not even talking about rap but like some people just like it's someone else is shining to see that someone else's failure so that's all i'm really worried about man and um Cavs in three. I would like to see less just straight up indie rock artists in Houston. I mean, I love I love that people get out 
and they do things there, that know. they love to do. But I feel like there are a lot of people that will just kind of come on the scene and they're like, oh, I'm just going to emulate so-and-so band. And I'm going to play this generic indie rock, and I hate it. I hate it so much. We it always gets to me. Like, holy shit. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, I... I, I would love to see more, more uh, a more uh, mix of genres whenever I go to a show. I don't want to see just a bunch of indie rock bands and then maybe like one rapper on there. It's like no, like I don't know, branch out. We definitely uh-uh. need more Dead Dialect podcasts, though. Or, uh, he asked what they need less of. Uh, less of more Dead Dialect podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah keep it exclusive. 